Hey everybody, I'm going to unmute everyone that I can and I'm um, going to welcome you here. Who, anyone, can you say hi or uh, anyone being able to, to speak so far? Hello? Hey, hi, who is this? This is Gage. Hey Gage, how are you doing? I'm doing fine. How are you doing? Hey, very good. So, what's happening in your your budding note business? How's how are things? Well, what currently I'm trying to um, work with real estate agents, use who are using owner financing to help them uh, structure the notes in the beginning instead of getting the discount later on in life. That's awesome. So, where remind me what uh, are you in Colorado? Yes, I'm in Denver. In Denver. Okay, great. Yep. So how how's the... It takes a while to develop the relationships, doesn't it? Yes, it does. <laughs> so are you doing a lot of educating at their meetings and things like that? That's exactly what I'm doing right now. It's basically there's a, a lot of apprehension with owner financing right now. Right, um, right. And I think, I, I mean, my opinion is just because it's, it's not... People aren't familiar with it. Right. So, and, uh, and plus, so yeah. you know, they... Regulatorily speaking, they've made it, you know, seem like a landmine for people. You exactly. Know, so people get people get scared with it, but there there seems to be um, a small community so far of growing uh, of people u willing to use it. Well, that's so, good. Um, that's I'm just good. Trying to stay with them. That's perfect. <laughs> Well, good to hear from you, and, and glad to have you here. Anybody else want to peep in and say hi and tell us what you're doing? Well, I guess not. Either people don't have mics or <laughs> they don't have anything to say. But anyway, welcome to the July 5th uh, meeting of Transaction Review and Calculator Practice. As always, um, we're going to go over a deal, and this one's kind of new. Uh, this is actually one I'm closing on uh, next week. I almost never, ever, ever, ever buy seconds, and this is one I'm buying. So, uh, you know, feel free. As, I'm going to leave the line open as long as it doesn't get too, um, you know, too busy or too noisy. So that great. Oh, hi, Kay. She's saying, I don't have a mic. She's not trying to ignore me. Thank you, Kay. <laughs> <laughs> um, anyway. Um, so here's the situation. This lady, uh, uh, well, the way this came to me, so so Gage, don't don't quit with what you're doing, because um, this lead that I got here that we're talking about came from a real estate agent, but kind of out in a more ruralish er area of Southern California, and um, she's quite familiar with owner financing. In fact, has carried property on uh you know farmland that she's bought and sold and so she has this client that had this this note that we're talking about and this client could not you know shopped her note around everywhere and it's non-traditional and uh, so she couldn't get uh, a decent price for it or no one basically no one offered her anything except a full per uh, full purchase and so when i came along with the partial idea all of a sudden we had a deal and it made sense for everybody so we're just going to go over this. Please, uh, you know, speak up if you can or type uh, in the chat, uh, the chat button there or whatever. Um, I wonder, it says I have questions here, but I don't see them popping up. But you, know, you guys know how to use the chat, chat feature. All right, so it, this is up north. And so here's an important thing. I like this property. You know, when you buy a note, you should always think of how will I feel if I end up owning this property? Now, this is right up my alley. It's 40 acres. It's up in um, San Luis Obispo. It's actually got a ocean view, uh, but it's like off the grid type living. 40 acres. It's got one house. They're working on two more houses uh, to be totally finished as sort of a resort area. It's totally off the grid, solar. I mean, seriously, this is the kind of property that if I owned it, I might just pick up and leave LA and go live here. <laughs> I mean, seriously. So that's an important thing. Like if this was a property I didn't like and I didn't resonate with this, I I may not have done this deal. So that's just an important consideration. Oh, hey, hi, Mike. I see your greetings. Thank you so much. Okay, sales price was 240 Now this is probably low because what happened is these people bought the property... Um, I don't know, three or five years ago, and they paid in the 300s for it. 
and uh, the problem was they ran they run into financial problems, so they ran out of money to you know, finish out the entitlements and getting the road built and everything like that. Um, so anyway, they ended up having to sell for uh, th there. This is like a hundred and fifty thousand below the appraisal that they had just like a year ago. Okay. They took a pretty small down payment, right? So 240 took a $30,000 down payment. They had a $75,000 first, you know, on it already, which when they went to sell the property, the the guy that did this private money loan who lives down here where I do, he he said he let the loan ride to the new buyer. He let them assume the loan because uh, he liked the strength of the payers, and we'll touch on that in a minute. So they took over the first $75,000 private loan. I can't remember what it is, 10 or 11% interest only. And then they, they carried back the balance, which was, so if we got a $240,000 price minus $30,000 down payment minus the $75,000 first, then we see what the seller carry back second position loan was they gave him a screaming deal six percent amortized over 30 years okay so you guys know that based on you know the things we've been talking about uh, and then we calculate payment here so the payments 809.39 so um so what do you think about this note i mean what what are what's making it weak there's several factors making it look really kind of weak in terms of how much I can pay for it. The interest rate and the yep, term? That is a really low rate for a second TD at uh, almost 90% combined loan to value. And this is the biggest killer here, amortized over a complete, no, there's no balloon or anything, you know? so. If that went out to term, I mean, what investor in today's market wants to be in a second at 6% when inflation's already probably at 8 or 9 right now, not even counting what could happen, right? So, um, What's the interest rate on the first? Uh, I think it's uh, 10 or 11% interest only. I'd have to go look at the paperwork because obviously if I'm going to consider buying any piece of this at all, I'm going to want to know a lot about this, right? Because uh, why? Why am I wanting to? Because they get paid out first. Right. What happens if these both go into default at the same time? What do I have to do to protect my position? I have to keep the payments to the first going yeah. while I foreclose, right? So let's see what, let's see if it's 10% interest, 75,000. Oops. Um, Say it's 10% interest only times 0.10 equals, that's how much a year, let's divide by 12 equals, um, I'm going to have to pay 625 a month to this guy to keep him happy, to keep him from foreclosing, because if he forecloses before me, what happens to me? You lose. <laughs> yeah, I'm wiped off. I'm wiped off. So that just means when I'm buying a second, I got to factor in. Is it worth it even if I've got to pull money out of my pocket, which that means that, you know, i got to keep money set aside that's not locked up in another investment just as um, in, in case something happens. Plus, you know, I may have other fees to pay, insurance, forced place insurance, or I could have back taxes to pay, things like that. So going on, any other comments, questions before we go to the next slide? All right, uh, this deal, and I, I don't know if you guys have tuned in to some of the, um, the, the non-performing, the guys that are doing non-performing seconds behind performing firsts, but there's a lot of people that, I mean, that's kind of a hot, sexy um, niche of the note market right now is buying non-performing paper, um, and a lot of people like these seconds, but, but if they're behind performing firsts, and so one thing I've learned about hanging out with some of those guys and listening to what they're saying is the conversation for them is not only about the collateral, but the kind of the, the quality and the mental setup of the, of the people. 
So in this case, it, it's sort of a credit thing and not so much a loan to value thing for those guys. So that sort of, you know, affects how I think about this too. Because usually, I had al I've always said I won't buy seconds, but here I am buying a second this next week. Um, the credit is perfect. This is a, a very prominent doctor up in Santa Maria and his, I think, probably gay partner. And I don't know, uh, these people tend to have money, they have reputation, and, um, and so this is a good credit risk from this standpoint. And the reason they, I said, well, then if they're so well off, why didn't they put down a bigger damn payment? And they said, well, they wanted to keep lots of reserves for the development of what they want to develop into the property. And frankly, they were out of time. That was the only offer th on the table they needed out. Um, and so that's what they took. But, but so that's just part of the conversation there. So if now going back, what's, remember the first thing we do, because even though he's a good credit risk, I like knowing this sort of thing, but let's go back to my basic underwriting, right? So we take the value of the property. If my maximum ITV or investment to value is 50%, so this is what it sold for. I don't care that the appraisal says closer to 400. Um, I'm going to divide by two. And then, um, so 120 is the maximum uh, exposure on this thing. Well, obviously somebody's already got 70, you know, 75,000 of the first. So let me subtract that out. So there's where I come up with 45,000 is the maximum I can spend on this second. That's not how much I want to spend. Actually, I'd like to spend as little as possible, right? But if I was going to not even looking at a yield conversation, but just an investment to value maximum. This is the most I can pay for the whole note. It doesn't matter for five years, for 12 years, for 20 years, for 30 years. This is the maximum. So if she sells me the whole note, I get it for 45,000, which is divided by 135. That's 30, she has to take 33 cents on the dollar to get all her money out of it like that, right? Okay, and so obviously, does that sound good to her? No, it sounds horrible, right? It just makes her feel sick, feel sick in the pit of her stomach. Okay, so then here's what she's selling the note for. She wants $40,000 um, to put down on another piece of property uh, that she likes out in the Temecula area, somewhere out there. Um, and so she only needs 40 and... So here's, here's what I did. I, I kind of went in the, I stayed below this and I gave her a little more than this just in case there's any closing costs or anything so that she will more than net 40 because this is my offer to her with her paying any and all closing costs or paying for a lender's title policy if she didn't get a dual policy at the sale of the property. And I said, how about I can buy like the whole note, which is 360. 54 payments left for 45 or I could buy the next 15 years uh, for 42 to 50 and so this is what we're doing um, so I'm going to buy 180 so half basically half the note for 42 to 50 my yield is 22 percent okay now that's I wish it was actually a little bit more. I mean, if I, if I wouldn't have been so quick to offer on this, I'd probably been a little safer here because if I have to go out the full, well, it doesn't change my yield that much. But I mean, if I really have to go out this long, I'm betting, here's what I'm betting, is that after they get the development together and they're not going to want this private money loan on there forever, they're probably going to refinance. And so I'll probably be paid off sooner than this. But just in case, even if I go all the way out, I know I can still handle this. And still, it comes back to the fact that this guy's a good credit risk. And I really like that type of property. In fact, you know, now that the kids are all in high school, I've been thinking that, you know, we've been wondering if we're going to stay in L.A. We were thinking that we're going to go up north and be hippies or something like that. And, and, and do just have land to be a little, to spread out a little bit more. So anyway, um, so next one. Okay, um, so here's how we're figuring this. So if, if you were me and you came across, you know, this type of deal that you you wanted to do sort of for yourself, let's just go through the numbers and show you kind of how I'm 
you know, doing this thing. So uh, payments made already six. So this closed six months ago, which is great. I mean, everything's pretty fresh. Um, I can get the, the title policy assigned to me. That's what I'm waiting on right now. And then the, the hazard insurance, you know, listed as an additional insured. I need to get that into my name. She's trying to get me the full payment history from uh, the servicing company, yada, yada. Okay, and figure out how to switch servicing to me. Because I do my own servicing, obviously. Not obviously, but I do my own servicing. I like to. Um, and then I'm buying 180. So... Uh, so basically, I have to find out what she going to have left if I, if, if I buy at the end of 15 years. What will she have left? So I need to recreate the original note here. Probably this is uh, boring for you people that have been with me for a while here. But okay, so here's the original note. Now let's go to the amortization. So now um, I have to go down to 186 and see at the end of 186 payments, what will we have? And here it is, 93,913. Okay, so this is how I, you know, told her the deal. Um, you'll have, when you get the note back, you'll have 93,913. You'll have the, the down payment you got from the buyer six months ago. You'll have... What I'm paying you, 42,250. Um, you already collected six payments, 48,56. So for your 135,000 note, really you're getting 171,19. Does that sound better than 33 cents on the dollar? Yeah. <laughs> Just in case everyone's asleep already. But anyhow, so so that's what we uh so she could yes so that will not chop her off of the knees right what we're doing is preserving her paper asset so she doesn't have to take such a steep steep discount because like i said what's what i can only give her 2500 more for the whole thing so she might as well keep it um and she's still going to have enough to do her next uh investment which is to buy this piece of property out there in, in southern, southern california so it, it works out good for everyone and I'm staying, you know, I'm staying safe. I've got a nice investment on a property I like secured by, you know, some really strong payers. But here's things that, you know, I'm thinking out loud about. Um, like I said, I need to see the first deed of trust because he's in front of me and I need to keep on track of that. In fact, probably reach out and give this guy a call and just to create some rapport so that if anything goes weird, um, you know, he can let me know and give me the chance to buy him out or whatever, you know, if it comes to that. Um, other things. In the worst case scenario, like I said, I'll have to keep the first current. That is, spells opportunity cost. I can't, I have to keep some money in reserve. It's kind of like having a rental property where you have to keep some reserves for um, repairs and maintenance and things like that. Um, also, uh, you know, that I mentioned, there's a good possibility that this loan may be paid off sooner than 180 months. Um, and so I want to show you like what that would look like and how I figure out, um, you know, part of the contract is figuring out what that partial amortization looks like if there's an early payoff. Because obviously I don't get the whole note. If this pays off in two years, then it's not like I'm stealing the whole note. She's still got the tail end. And, and I'll show you how we look at that. And, um, and I can pay an investor 10% and keep the spread. And if anything goes sideways, so I've got it under contract at 22 and I'll pay 10 on it. And, and like I said, if anything goes bad, then I take care of it. Like it'll be my money out of pocket to keep the first current, to foreclose, to do any sort of, uh, remedies for default, whatever it takes to get the, um, to a return of the capital or get the note re-performing. Um, so if I did that, let's see what it would be like. Um, we said I was buying 180, um, payments and we were saying 42.5. So let's say I want to just, you know, have a little money to buy groceries. So let's say, um, uh, 44,000 I'll take from an investor and then what will I get? Um, uh, what? 15, 17, 50 at closing. Okay, so that helps me with my due diligence, with any closing costs, and just a little money on the table and, uh, for me to keep my 
expenses going. So if, so, so if you can be thinking of this, if you have investors who have money and you find notes you want to buy, this is how you can be thinking uh, and doing what I'm doing is use other people's money, not just to broker them notes, but buy them yourself with other people's money. You can take a little bit out front like I'm doing here. I don't suggest a huge amount. Um, I think it's more an integrity when most of your profit comes as the note performs. That way they know that your interests are aligned with theirs. Uh, but I think it's fair to take you know a little bit out front because there are operating costs that we all have. Anyway, so if I plug these in, I wonder how much of the monthly payment they're going to need. So now I'm going to click this. Well, they're only going to need 472 uh, a month if I do it this way. So let me add in because this is a negative number already. Let me find out what my spread is on this. So I'm going to make $336 passive income on top of this. And like I said, a lot of that I'll be putting aside as in a reserve type of account. But that's pretty decent. Uh, and But here's the thing. I might find someone who doesn't want to hang out for that long. Okay, may, They might want uh, only a... Uh, maybe they say I only want a, a seven-year commitment. So they only want to be in 84 months. So if I need to get them all paid in seven years, here's how much of the payment they're going to need. Wow, almost all of it. So at that point, I'm making, what, $80 a month passive, which I, I could be very happy to do because uh, at the end of the seven years, I'll have another eight years that the whole payment, you know, comes to me. So I can leave myself a really big tail end of the note. So there's several things that I could do with that. Um, any questions, comments before I go show you how I create that other amortization schedule? Then f in real life, how do, how do we do this thing where, um, where I'm buying this part? How do we figure this out? How are we going to figure out the, uh, how that works? So I'm going to go to, I have to bring up virtual box. This is a little thing that gives me a, a, a PC on my, on my Mac because key value and NoteSmith and things like that only work on a PC. So I have to have this little PC inside my Mac. So it just works okay, but it's not my perfect picture. So anyway, this is what the T-value icon looks like. I don't know if you can really see that, but if you don't have it, um, you should get it. I think it's only $150. It's a really good program and um, helps you do a lot of stuff uh, quickly. So let's just say, Okay, first off, before I get into showing you that, let's figure out how much of the note I'm buying. Does anybody know how? Do you guys know how to buy, how to figure out how much of that note I'm buying? I'm, I'm not buying the whole thing, but I'm sure as heck going to get paid back more than 40, 42.5, right? I did buy at a discount, even though we made it look like there's not much of one. There is a discount. So any, anyone already know? Do you do this? Okay, so first I have to go back to the original note this and recreate it. Okay, and then um, it's at six percent. I just I just go and recreate the whole note again, so all the numbers are in the system. Now I out of this original note, here's how I get what what part of the note I'm buying. So I'm not buying 360. I'm buying. At, at this 6% interest rate of how the note was written, I'm only I'm buying 180 payments. So I'll put that in there. And then I come over here and press present value. I'm actually buying 95 almost $96,000 of this note for 42,250. So that's like 50 cents on the dollar for that portion, right? So that's the number I take and hopefully I'll leave it here. Let me go back into this computer here. So then I'll say um, San Luis Obispo second, and um, the interest rate on it is six percent. I'm recreating what the note is. Then let's just say I'm going to buy it as of uh, the July first payment, like that. And here's what I put in for um, the loan balance, basically. This is what the amortization is going to be. Okay, there's the loan amount. 
So if, this is for if they refinance early or if they default and I have to foreclose. This is the amortization schedule that says how much of the note belongs to me. Okay, 809.39, oops, point 180, tab over. So it creates an amortization schedule for me. And voila, I print this out. And uh, what I can see is at any given point, we can see how what is owed to me goes down. So let's say three years from now, or say at the end of 2015, if this thing pays off at that point, I'm still owed $80,949. And right, I only put out $42,250. So I'm doing well. You know, I'm doing well if it just continues to pay. I'll do really, really well if it pays off, it pays off early. And in the meantime, the other, the other gal keeps, um, keeps the balance that's left over. So if, if I get paid off at that point, then she will get, um, what's 135. She'll, she'll get the balance of her note at that point, whatever exactly it turns out to be. So then she'll still get she'll still do better than if she sold me the whole note for forty five thousand right now. Okay, so hopefully um, that helps a little. So now that's kind of all I ended up or, or planned to kind of uh, talk to you guys about, and we're just two minutes from the end of our meeting, so I kind of want to see if um, anyone else has questions now. But anyway, I'll, I'll put all this up on the website so you can exactly see my paper trail. And if you have questions, just email me and, and I'll um, try to get back to you on that. Uh, so anyway, I'm just trying to give you the inside scoop. And there's just a few little tricks of how to put these deals together. So Faye, uh, Kay, um, you're looking into the non-performing seconds. Did you end up contacting and getting $50,000 together? Oh, not yet? Okay, that's good. Um, anyhow, Kay, so anyway, Kay, Kay has been a member of the community for a, a while and I had the pleasure of meeting her in person down in San Diego when I was speaking there recently and, uh, she's all hot on the trail for non-performing seconds, but you know, there's a lot of different vendors for non-performing seconds and she, you know, she's kind of hooking up with one of the better ones that has a better reputation of kind of scrubbing the opportunities uh, before you buy, uh, but they, they will only sell in 50,000 trunks, uh, right now, as far as I know. And before long, I have the word on the street is that they're only going to do joint ventures because they can make such a big upside, keeping control of the note and keeping the spread. Like how I showed you on this little note with, with taking 15 or 1700 out front, um, I can still make $330 a month passive income just leveraging someone else's money. Yes, I have some responsibility. If something goes sideways, I got, I better have, you know, be ready to put the money out to fix it. But, but still you can see that, you know, that there's a good opportunity of not just brokering. I think it's much better to buy with other people's money and, you know, figure out how you need to, what you need to learn to attract that kind of trust and to put the deals together. And so you can make passive income um, using other people's money. I, I love passive income even more than like big commission checks almost because I just love the freedom that I see building up when my passive income goes up a little bit more every month. It's really fun. Um, let's see. What else? Um, where do you get the, so oh, so T value. You can go buy it. I think you can buy it on the Noteworthy site. I think you can even just get it on Amazon. Um, so it's it's really um, worth the money. Uh, Noteworthy sells them. I can't remember if my last guest speaker sells them or not, but I'm pretty sure you can just order it from Amazon. T-Value. Okay, so that's good. Um, maybe T-Value. So I, I would look that up. I consider it one of the major main tools of my of my business. So anyhow, um, oh, I'm trying to unmute everybody if I can. All right, before we uh, unhook from this, um, anything else we can chat about? I really appreciate you guys showing up tonight. Oh, okay.
yeah, I'm gonna noteworthy uh, USA.com. You can get it on Am probably just hey, John. Yeah, who's that? Margie. Hi, Margie. So, for example, where did you find this note? Uh, this was brought to me um, by a realtor, actually, who is trying to help this lady buy a parcel. So she's going to make money. If this lady can shake loose some capital from her note, she's going to make money, um, you know, putting that real estate transaction together for her client. So it's funny. That's She, she ended up buying my book, and uh, because of this client, and so that's how I got this deal. And now I have a realtor who is really getting the conversation because she's going to make money putting this deal together. And as a side conversation, now we're talk I'm talking to her about, but anyway, uh, she's that note, one of the notes she's carrying, she might want to sell to me as well. So we're talking about that. So this one deal could turn into more and more. And now I've got a realtor who's actually a good, uh, you know, de will be good for deal flow. So that's why, you know, getting out there and sharing information, writing books, doing blogs, doing YouTube videos helps to attract business to you instead of your scrounging out, you know, in the same way everybody else is for deals. Yeah, so that that's just one of my favorite ways. And especially, I just really like it because here's a property I really love and uh, a lady, uh, like I just really feel like I want I'm the only person that can help her and I can do the right thing and uh, you know not chop her off of the knees I can still have a great investment but I can still help her meet her needs and save and salvage as much of her cash as possible so it just makes me feel good all the way around mm -hmm. so yes uh, I mean I usually don't get into second positions either but Actually, someone just brought me one that a guy's trying to buy a property and he's going to get a first from the current owner. No, no, actually, he's, he's looking to, to, we would be the first, but he's going to have a second. Um, the owner's going to carry a second? Yes. Hmm. Well, you're in first still, right? Yeah. But the problem is he... His ratios are not, what he's putting in is not what I typically like. Mm. You know, he, yeah. he won't have really 35% in because of what the current owner is going to put up for him. Yeah. Well, is he, is the seller, are, you there, are they asking you to buy the seller out? Uh, no, they're asking me to fund uh, the guy who's buying the house. He's looking for, he's, you know, he's really good credit, he's got a great job, he makes a lot of money, he's got like, I think it's, I don't know the numbers in front of me, I think it's like a $300,000 purchase, um, it has income because it has, uh, it's non-conforming, it has two apartments on the property, uh -huh. and that makes it non-conforming so he can't get money from a bank, Right. which right. I didn't realize that, that's the new one I just learned. Well, so what's he? How much does he want from you total for the first, right? Yeah, he wants. Um, I think he the. I think he wants me to put. The, he wants me to put up. Uh, he's gonna put up like a hundred, and then the guy who currently owns it is gonna put up seventy five, and then he wants me to put up the balance. So you only have to come up with a hundred and twenty five. Um, yeah, I think, or maybe, no, it's got to be more, I think it's 175, maybe it's 350. So, you know, in other words, my, my, um, my loan to value, I think, based on what he's putting in, you know, he's, he, normally I require someone to put in 35%, but he's actually only really putting in, um, 20% or 25%. Yeah, but I'm confused, but won't you be in first position, though? Yes, I would be in first. Yeah, he said the current owner would sit in second position. That's well, fair. that sounds all right to me, actually. But, you know, all things considered, if it went, 
if it went sideways, then you're looking at a pretty low cash dumping price because of the non-conforming, right? Yes, yeah, see, it's illegal. It's more the, the the number side kind of works. It's the question is the legal question, really. Which I need to write to my lawyer because I don't know what you know. If it did go south, I don't know where how we then relate to the guy that's in the second position. Oh, you he'd either have to keep you current and foreclose himself or you go to foreclosure and he gets wiped off so you're safe uh-huh so if you're only if you're in at 50 percent or less i that to me that sounds like a, a a reasonable deal but but yeah you know you should check out always whatever makes you feel comfortable but like check this out like if i was gonna loan money on a if i was to loan you know, just loan money to this guy. Would could I make twenty percent? I mean, really, could I make twenty percent? Would he? Wouldn't that sound like pretty crazy on a second trust deed? But I'm buying a discounted note so I can get those kind of yields. But I could never get anyone to pay twenty two percent. Probably it would just look really bad um, on a second. So it's just I'm just saying. Um, I kind of like how these work out, the buying the discounted paper versus trying to, to loan it and deal with all those um, scenarios. But Right, right. Now, when you first were looking at the, I, I came on a few minutes late when you were showing the numbers. I'm thinking, how is she buying that $135,000 note? Now, when you said you were going to buy it for $45,000, I was like, huh? Yeah, I mean, that's a, that sounds pretty crazy, but... Um, but that's just my maximum ITV right now, right there. You know, maybe sometimes, um, you know, on a f if it's a first position, I might sometimes go up to 60%. Once in a while, I eke a little bit more over this. But usually, and especially if I'm buying like this a second, I'm not going over the maximum investment to value right there. So that's how that works. Um, anyway, so anybody else have anything, comments, questions? But yeah, I mean, let me know, Margie, let me know what your uh, guy says and, yeah. uh, you yeah. know, what you decide to do on that deal. Because it sounds like a pretty, pretty good bet. Yeah, the biggest, you know, the biggest issue is uh, the guy was sitting in second. You know, as I said, the, this guy has like a, I think he's a contractor in Afghanistan. He makes a lot of money. It's, the property's really good. You know, everything, everything's the plus, the one negative part is that he's not putting down 35 percent yeah but still that's like having a guarantor on the note because the guy who has the second he's going to be want to he's going to almost be like um securing the note because he doesn't want to be wiped off at a, a trustee sale or a um you don't do trustee sales in florida he doesn't want to be you know wiped off if you go to foreclosure right so you have that's like having two payers on the note and i like those situations where there's everybody's excited to see my note perform and make my life simple and so anyway that's kind of just no, you're right that's a good, very good point very good point yeah okay well great we've gone over a little bit but this was really fun and uh as always um let's go to um there's a couple new things i want to show you super super quick um bup, bup, bup. let's see if you go to your dashboard i just want to alert you this maybe you already saw this but if you go to your dashboard up in this area this is where you can find out um i've made a couple changes to this recently but you can you keep up on here the next club meeting is um i've, I've changed it so it's going to be the third monday of every month just so it stays consistent so anywhere you can get a 30 minute consultation if you ever need it here i added that as a as a bonus um there's other things the frequently asked questions um, email me if you need help i'll do the best i can and then uh, i'm going to be adding some as i prepare for my one day seminar I'm going to start, you know, over the next few weeks, little by little, adding, you know, forms and and uh, more documentation that so you can pretty much do exactly what I'm doing if you want. So so that'll be fun to be able to share with you over the coming weeks leading up to uh, October 29th. So anyway, thank you so much. I appreciate you guys a lot.
and looking forward to your success and and um, happiness. We're now into the second half of 2012. Let's make it a good one. You guys take care. Bye-bye.